Well, good morning, everyone. Our sermon series has been the star of Christmas. Do you believe that Jesus is the star of Christmas? That he is the reason for the season? The reason we gather, the reason we celebrate is Jesus. Jesus is the star of the show. It's all about him. And today's message is a star is born, talking about the birth of Jesus. And why does this matter for us today? Think about this. Christmas is the most celebrated holiday on the planet. Why? What makes Christmas so special? The birth of a baby in a little town called Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago. This one event, the birth of Jesus, split history in two. B.C., before Christ, and A.D., not meaning after death, but Anno Domini, the year of the Lord, the year Jesus was born. And we're in the 2023rd year of our Lord. But why does this birth of Jesus so many years ago matter to us today? I mean, what is the point for us today? And I suggest to you, the birth of Jesus means four things. You can write these down. There's a place on your uh, bulletin for writing things down. So the birth of Jesus means four things for us today. Celebration, salvation, reconciliation, and declaration. Notice a theme there. And we see all four of these in the passage that we're going to focus on today, which is Luke chapter 2. Let's turn there together. Luke chapter 2, and we'll start in verse 6. And to set the stage, at the beginning of Luke chapter 2, we see that Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census to be taken of the entire Roman Empire. And this is the chronological setting. This is not make-believe. There's a specific time that Jesus came during Caesar Augustus. And so Joseph and Mary traveled to Bethlehem, a specific city or, or town, because Joseph was a descendant of David, the town of David. This is a specific geographical setting. And so this is not myths and legends. Let's look at Luke chapter 2, verse 6. While they were there in Bethlehem, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, which is a feeding trough for animals, because there was no room for them in the inn or the guest room. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. Imagine this. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Wouldn't you be? But the angel said to them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left the, the shepherds and gone into, the, into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child, and all who had heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. So first of all, we see in this passage that Christmas means celebration, Christmas is a time for celebration, isn't it? It's a time where we gather together, a lot of parties, a lot of get-togethers with family, eat together, laugh together, give out presents. And it's ironic sometimes that Jesus, the guest of honor, isn't invited to the, the party. 
But Christmas is a birthday party for Jesus. Christmas is a time to celebrate. It's a happy time. This is why we say Merry Christmas, Happy Christmas. It's supposed to be a time of celebration. And I don't want to shock you, but do you know God likes parties? Do you know that? God likes parties. In fact, the Bible says that angels have a party every time a lost sinner puts his faith in Jesus, repents. There's a time of celebration. Christmas is a time for celebration. Look at what the angel said. I bring you what? Good news of great joy, mega joy in the Greek. And it's going to be for all the people. It's good news for everyone. And this is true. Good news equals great joy. When a baby is born, parents send out an announcement. The baby's here. And there's a celebration. Everyone, woo! What's the first question they ask? How big is he? Or boy, girl, you know, if they don't know already. And once they hear the good news, there is great joy, right? And this first Christmas, who gave the birth announcement? Angel, an angel. How, how awesome is that? Having an angel give a birth announcement. And they were celebrating this good news. What is the good news? Look at verse 11. Here it is. Today, in the town of David, that's Bethlehem, a Savior has been born to you. He's Christ, and he's the Lord. The good news, the reason to celebrate is we have a Savior. And this is the second thing that Christmas means for us, is salvation. Jesus didn't come to scold us. He came to save us. And the fact that God sent a Savior means that we need saving. What does it mean to be saved? This is used in Christian circles, isn't it? We need to get someone saved. What does that mean? Simply that someone needs rescued, delivered, set free. If you're trapped in a burning house, you need a savior. You need someone to rescue you. And so Jesus is our savior. He came to save us from what? From sin and from death. In fact, do you remember what the name Jesus means? What does Jesus mean? It's from the Hebrew, Yeshua. It's from the Old Testament name, Joshua, Yeshua. And it simply means the Lord, or Yahweh, is salvation. The Lord saves. Yahweh saves. So every time you say the word Jesus, you're saying, Yahweh saves. The Lord is salvation. Every time you mention the name Jesus, it's a reminder that Jesus came to save you. Do you remember what the angel said to Joseph? You are to give him the name Jesus. Why? Because he will save his people from their sins. His name is Yeshua. The Lord is salvation. Yahweh saves Save people from what? Their sins. What is sin? It's, it's anything that we think, anything that we say, or anything that we do that breaks God's law. Sin is an I problem. Just like I is in the middle of the word pride, I is in the middle of the word sin. It's focusing on me, what I want to do. I want to be the boss. It's all about me. And so sin separates us from God, who is the true boss. And Jesus came to rescue you from your sin problem. You can't save yourself. You can't be good enough. You need a savior. So we're saved from sin, from death, and we're saved by grace. We can't earn it, and we don't deserve it. At Christmas, we celebrate the good news that we have a savior, and that He's, he came to save everyone, even us today. So Christmas means celebration. It means salvation. But Christmas also means reconciliation. Verse 13 says, Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared. And in the Old Testament, God is often described that as the Lord of hosts, the, the God of angel armies, suggesting that there's a rank and order to the angelic beings. And they joined the other angel this general angel, the one who gave the announcement, maybe Gabriel or, or Michael, and they're praising God, saying, glory to God in the highest. 
as we just sang, in excelsis. That's what it means in Latin. And on earth peace to men on whom his favors rest. Notice this word peace. What's that mean? That means reconciliation. Reconciliation is about mending a broken relationship. Relationships that are restored. A husband and wife get together after a separation. That's reconciliation. Two countries that make peace. Reconciliation. And because of the birth of Jesus, we have reconciliation with God. We have peace with God available through Jesus. So we sing tonight, Silent Night. And do you remember what it says? Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners, what? Reconciled. That we don't have to face the wrath of God because of what Jesus has done. As Paul puts it, because we're justified through faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Christmas means that we can have peace with God today. You can have peace with God today. You can have reconciliation. So Christmas means celebration. It means salvation. It means reconciliation. And finally, Christmas means declaration, declaring making a statement. The angels say, it's time to celebrate. Your Savior's here. It's time to make peace with God. What happens next? It says that the angels left the shepherds, and the shepherds said to one another, let's go check out this, what, what the angels just told us. Let's, let's see. So they hurried off. They found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger, and when they had seen him, what did they do? They spread the word concerning what had been told about him. Did you catch that? They made a declaration. You got to hear about this. We have a Savior. They spread the word that Jesus has come, the anointed one, the Christ, the Lord. The good news is meant to be shared. So imagine you're walking down Lidditz and you see a rock star. Sometimes we see rock stars because of rock lidits. You know, you see Justin Bieber has been known to be around sometimes. Uh, Steven T uh, T Tyler Tyler was uh, from Aerosmith. They saw him at Bombergers. You know, so, um, you imagine Tom Hanks. You're walking down the street and uh, you see, and then, then you go into Wilbur's and you go, oh, Tom Hanks is buying some chocolate at Wilbur. And then you see him later at, at Roma eating a slice of pizza. Wouldn't you tell at least someone that you saw a movie star, a rock star? We have a much bigger star than Tom Hanks. Amen? Shouldn't we tell someone that we have a Savior, that Jesus is the star of Christmas? We declare joy to the world. The Lord is come. Jesus is the star of the show. As Galatians 4.4 4 says, when the time had fully come, when the time was just right, God sent his son, born of a woman, under the law. Christmas is a time for declaration. Now, before we uh, wrap up, I want you to think about this. Who did the angels go to? Who were the first ones to make this declaration? Think about this. The angels didn't go to the royalty in Rome. They didn't go to the high priest in the temple. They didn't go to Herod in his palace. They went to ordinary shepherds in a field. Shepherds were average people, ordinary people, not elite. They're often poor, humble, low status. And this is a reminder, listen, that God uses ordinary people like you and me, to declare an extraordinary message. In fact, throughout the Bible, God used ordinary shepherds, didn't he? Abraham was a shepherd. Jacob, Moses, David, all shepherds. God has a history, doesn't he, of using ordinary people for extraordinary purposes. And God uses ordinary people today and ordinary places like Bethlehem, like Lidditz, an ordinary town. But notice this too. Where did the shepherds hang out when the, the angels made this proclamation? 
they proclaimed this extraordinary message. And, and where were the, the shepherds? They, it says they were keeping watch. Where? In the fields. Now, you know, if there's a, a field full of sheep, there's a field full of other stuff too, isn't there? Whatever sheep leave behind, right? There's other stuff in that field. And in that messy, stinky field, and they came out, at darkness in the, in the night, what does it say? It says the glory shone around. Isn't that interesting? We often think that the, Lord, the, the glory of the Lord just shines around in pleasant places, in the temple, on the mountaintop. But sometimes in the middle of your messy, stinky situation, in the darkness of your night, God shows up. And the glory shows around, and you don't understand why in this situation, it seems God is breaking through. God's doing something extraordinary. His glory is showing all around. And it's true for us. This is why Jesus came in our mess, in the stinkiness and darkness of our situation God can use ordinary people like you and me and declare an extraordinary message. So what's so special about Christmas? On Christmas, a star was born, Jesus, the star of Christmas. His birth means for us celebration. It means salvation. It means reconciliation. And it means declaration. Now notice that all these words end with the suspect. The suffix, uh, suffix, suffix, fix, T I O N, suffix, suffix, T I O N, shun, right? Celebration, salvation, reconciliation, declaration. What does that mean? That it means the action of, that you're doing something. And so we don't want to just say this is a nice message, but Maybe there's something that we need to do based on the message today. For celebration, maybe some of you need to take action and celebrate a little bit more, party a little bit more, eat and maybe just one or two extra cookies, you know, maybe, just if that's the way you celebrate. That you need to say, this is good news, and I have great joy this Christmas. Feel, feel it in your heart. For salvation, maybe you need saving. Maybe you're the one who says, I need a savior. I need someone to save me from sin and death, and the only one is Jesus. For reconciliation, maybe you need to make peace with God. Perhaps you've been far from him for a long time because there's something going on in your, your heart. You have bitterness towards him, and you need to make peace with God through Jesus Christ. And finally, maybe your action plan for today is you need to declare the good news about Jesus. Even though you're in a messy situation, even though life sometimes stinks, even though you feel ordinary, your message is extraordinary. And you, like the shepherds, can go and spread the word that Jesus Christ is born. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for the wonderful, powerful message. Help us to celebrate your salvation, that there's good news, that we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, and teach us what it looks like to declare his salvation. Lord, we ask that you would use ordinary people like us who can't say certain words like sus suspix. Ordinary people to proclaim an extraordinary message because it's not about us. It's about you. So Lord, use us in extraordinary ways we pray in Jesus' name, amen.